Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem binary tree pre-order traversal. We're given the root of a binary tree and we want to return the pre-order traversal of all of its values. So this is a really simple problem to solve if you're doing it recursively. It's kind of one of the first algorithms that you learn when it comes to binary trees. But solving this problem iteratively is a bit more difficult and it's definitely useful to know, especially for interviews. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in this video. Let's say we're given a binary tree like this. First of all, what is the pre-order traversal? Well, we're going to start at the root and pre-order basically means that we're going to process this node, AKA in this case, add it to the array that we're trying to build. We're going to do that first and then we're going to recursively run pre-order traversal on the left subtree and then after that run pre-order traversal on the right subtree. So our output would look like this. We visited this, then we'd go left, we would visit this, so add two to the output array. We'd try to go left at this point, but we can't, there's nothing there. And then we would recursively pop back up to our parent node and then try to go right. Again, we can't, there's nothing there. So then from here, we would pop back up to this parent node. And then from here, we're basically done running pre-order traversal. So then we would pop back up to the parent here. And from here, we know that we're done with the left side of the tree. And since it's pre-order, we've already done this node. So then we'd recursively run pre-order traversal here. So we'd get to three, we'd add three to the output. Then we'd go left, add four to the output, try to go left, can't do that, try to go right, can't do that, pop back up here, then pop back up here, then try to go right, we'd add five to the output, and then at this point, we can't go left, can't go right, we'd pop back up, and then we'd say, well, we're done here because we already went to both sides, then pop back up here, and we're done here because we already did the left and right subtree, so then we'd basically be done. So how do we take this solution and then emulate it iteratively? Well, the main thing that we need to do is we'll have a single pointer that'll tell us like what the current node we're at is. That's the easy part. But the hard part is after we go left or after we go right, how do we go back up? Because there's not a pointer connecting a child node to its parent. So we kind of have to do that ourselves. And the easiest way to do it is with a stack data structure. And actually recursively, that's what the problem is doing. Well, that's what our function recursively is doing. It's not explicitly creating a stack, but there is an implicit stack, AKA the recursive call stack. So we're basically going to emulate this pretty similarly. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that out for you. So this is our stack. We're also going to have our result. That's also going to be an array. So now we start at the root. We're running pre-order. We're going to take this value and append it to the result. It's one. Now we want to go left, but we know that after we're done with this left subtree, we're going to need to go back up to the root. So what should we do? Should we take this node and add it to the stack? Let's you know, just draw it like a node one and add it to the stack so that we can pop back up to it. That's definitely a valid way to do this. But what I'm going to do is just skip that all together. I'm just going to take actually the right child of one and append that to the stack because this is pre-order. We know by the time we pop back up here, we've already added this to the result. There's no need to visit this again. Why not just skip that step all together and just add its right child to the stack? Because we know by the time we're done with this left subtree, all we want to do is do the right subtree next, not the root. So that's what I'm going to do here. Before we go left, let's append three, the right child, not the value. We're going to append the node because we want the pointers as well. I'm just writing out the value to make it simple. I guess I can put a circle around it if it makes it more obvious. But then we're going to be at the left child over here. So then add two to the result. 
Now from here, we're going to do the same thing. Even though we don't know that the left child is null or that the right child is null, we're still going to follow the same algorithm because it doesn't hurt us. It still works in this case. So what we're gonna do here is before we go to the left child, we're gonna add the right child to the stack, even though it's null. So I'm just gonna draw an N to indicate that it's null. And then we're gonna go left. We're gonna be here. Our pointer is going to be at a null value. There's nothing for us to do. By the time we get to a a null value, we know we can't go any further. With pre-order, we're trying to go as far left as we possibly can until we reach null. And when we reach null, that's the signal that we need to pop back up. In this case, that's the signal that we need to pop from our stack. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to pop the last value from the stack, which is null. So now our pointer is going to again be at null. So when our pointer is at null, we just pop from the stack. So once again, I'm going to pop now three from the stack. So that means now our current pointer is here at three. So it's a non-null node. So we're going to add the value three to the result. Now we're gonna go left, but before we go left, make sure to add the right child to the stack. So I'm gonna add five to the stack, and then we're gonna be at four. We're going to add four to the result. We're gonna try to go left, but before we do that, we're gonna add null to the stack. So I'm gonna add a null value here. We're kind of running out of space, but you probably get the idea at this point. Now our current pointer is at null, so we're gonna pop from the stack, popping null. So now our current pointer is again at null, so we're gonna pop from the stack one more time, popping five. So now our current pointer is at five. We're gonna add five to the result, and we're gonna try to go left, adding null to the stack, and you probably get the idea at this point. We're gonna add null to the stack. We're gonna go here to the left. We're gonna be at null. We're gonna end up popping that null from the stack. And then at this point, our current pointer is going to be at null and our stack is going to be empty. So if we try to pop from the stack, we can't pop anything. That's the signal that we're done. When our current pointer is null, and the stack is empty. So that's basically the algorithm. You can see we're pretty much still visiting each node twice. We are kind of visiting some null nodes, but that's not gonna change the overall time complexity. This is still going to be big O of N time complexity. We visit each node once, and we do have extra memory for the stack, which is basically going to be the height of the binary tree which in the worst case could be big O of N, or if it's a balanced binary tree, it could be log N. So now let's code this up. So what I'm gonna do first is initialize our current pointer and initialize our stack. The current pointer is initially just gonna be pointing at the root, pretty simple, and the stack is going to initially be an empty array. We're also going to have our result, which is also initially gonna be an empty array. And as we talked about, we're going to iterate until our current pointer is non-null or our stack is non-null. So then we have two choices. Either our current node is null or it's non-null. If it's non-null, then that's kind of the case where we're going to take the value and append it to the result. So current.value, append it to the result. We also then want to move left. We want to say current is going to be equal to current.left. But before we do this, we know we have to save the right child on the stack because we need to get back to it. So here I'm going to say stack.append current dot right the right node actually not the value but this could be null and that's not a problem as i kind of showed in the drawing explanation but the other case is if our current node yes is null then what do we want to do well first we want to pop from the stack and then assign that to be current. And then what would we want to do? Well, we would basically want to check again, is that node non-null? If it isn't, then we're gonna move left and add it to the result and also add its right child to the stack. So basically we don't need to take this code and copy and paste it down here because this loop is going to run again as long as this node is non-null or our stack is non-empty. That means there's still nodes to visit. So we don't need to copy and paste this. We know the next iteration of the loop is going to handle that for us. But if the, what we popped is null, then we're just gonna have to pop again. Nothing wrong with that. So after all of that's done, we're going to go ahead and return our result. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. 
And as you can see, yes, it does. It's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.